With just two transistors and less than 20 parts all up, you too can be transmitting on the AM broadcast band. In this video, I'll describe a super simple transmitter and give it a test to see how far my signal can be heard. Here's the circuit. I got it from a website called learningelectronics.net. Alright, here's the circuit of my unit. I have made a few small changes to suit the component values I had on hand. Also, I substituted an electric microphone rather than a crystal earpiece because, again, that's what I had. The transmitter has just two stages, an audio amplifier, very common circuit, you'll see it in a lot of electronics. Just got the electric microphone, single transistor, and the audio from the collector comes and modulates the one transistor RF oscillator. There's probably both frequency and AM modulation, but the thing we really want with this is change in amplitude, amplitude modulation when you talk into the microphone. It's a very simple design. It's probably not the cleanest in audio. If you're building a proper AM transmitter, you would likely have the amplifier modulating a power amplifier in the transmitter. You wouldn't have it trying to vary the bias on the base, especially as you might be pulling the frequency as well. But that's what this design does, and as you'll hear later on, it does actually work. Uh, this stage is just a one transistor RF oscillator stage. You vary the frequency by changing the coil. This is just a 100 microhenry RF choke, and there's two capacities here, 220 picofarad, but I actually used 240 because that's the values that I had. Anyway, this gives around 1300 kilohertz. Um, if you wanted to drop the frequency, then use a slightly bigger coil or just increase the values of these capacitors. If you want to vary it a little bit, put a variable capacitor across or instead of one of these capacitors, you may need to vary the frequency if there are AM broadcast stations. You don't want to be transmitting on the same frequency that a station is, otherwise you may cause interference or more significantly that station will be so powerful that you won't hear your own transmitter under it. As for the antenna connection, I've just got it going via 150 picofarad capacitor, just in series with the emitter. The output is probably high impedance. As for antennas, with these sorts of frequencies, generally the longer and higher the better. There's no arrangements made for impedance matching, so there's going to be a poor match, very likely, and your range won't be so good. Now if we have a look at the unit itself, um, the electric microphone, the audio amplifier stage, and the RF oscillator. As for the construction method, just a block of wood, drawing pins. Now these drawing pins were coloured, they had some sort of paint or coating, so I had to use a file and file off these parts, but that's good because that allowed you to get a good contact for the soldering. And a few of the components, the leads are a bit longer than desirable, but as this is a fairly low frequency, it's not going to cause too many problems. All these wires here are just connected, all these pins. Um, this is the earth, and across the top here, this is the positive rail. I'm going to run it from about 12 volts, and here is the antenna connection. This arrangement is a bit heavy and bulky compared with other techniques for construction, 
but it is quite robust and suitable if you want to build something and you're not sure you want to keep it as a project then you can very easily unsolder all the components and build something on this board very easily and you can do it multiple times without any problem it's probably going to be less clear than either the circuit diagram or what I just showed you but here's a drawing um, I've got the pins there electric microphone first transistor both the transistors by the way are BC547 small signal type transistors that also work on medium short waves as well and then uh, resistors and capacitors um, one thing that I found when I was experimenting with this is that the frequency is quite easily put off tune if you vary the capacitors or the resistors around here a um, bit of a detuning effect when you experiment with values so you might find a bit of interaction can you convert this to 160 meters the answer is almost certainly yes I haven't tried it yet but I did a previous video about estimating capacitance and inductance values um, given the values you see here are around 1300 kilohertz if you wanted to increase the frequency to a bit above 1800 to get into the 160 meter amateur band then you'd reduce the values of this coil and capacitors um, I'd say maybe 68 microhenry maybe cut these down to 150 picofarad each probably a better idea if you use variable capacitors so you can um, get it to be spot on your frequency um, without too much cutting and trying as for the output power haven't measured it it's going to be very low it might be maybe 10 20 milliwatts which makes it strictly very much a local type coverage transmitter um, though you will get more range if you take some time to get the antenna coupling right and use a good antenna which not many people have for 160 motors uh, for local type coverage it needs to be a vertical antenna with with a good grounding system so that's a quick circuit description let's see what it sounds like on air I've just got it connected to a little RF indicator there's only a few parts in it completely passive a diode capacitor RF choke and a meter movement a variable resistor to change its sensitivity you know you can see the reading there I've only got one thing connected actually the ground lead so when I put my fingers on the telescopic antenna the needle goes right up that's just proof that we are getting RF out of this more proof is audio feedback when we've got the receiver tuned to the right frequency near the microphone. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Speaking about 10 centimeters from the microphone. Speaking from 10 centimeters away from the microphone. Now close talking the microphone. Now close talking the microphone. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four.
The nice to have a couple of these longer. Here's our little station. As you can hear, a bit of hum, even though it's being cut off battery. Probably about 200 metres or so away from home. Not doing any antenna matching. I am just using the home station antenna and a water pipe ground. Just a bit further away. Just near a power line and there's some cables coming up and that's helping as far as picking up the signal goes. How useful is this transmitter? Probably not as good as a small FM transmitter. The audio clarity wasn't as good. But if you've got a AM radio that you're restoring or fixing, and there's parts of the world like Europe where AM radio is almost dead, then if you want a locally generated AM signal, then you have to build something yourself, like this small transmitter. If you wanted to, you could disconnect the microphone and feed the audio either through here. You'd probably want a potentiometer or maybe even get away with feeding the audio through here. And then you might be able to play recordings of old historical radio programs and have them transmitted and be able to pick them up on your restored radio. So that's the main use I can see for something like this. Another use is if you just like the idea of your voice coming out out of a radio speaker, then this is super simple, two transistors, all very common components. There's fixed capacitors there, but you can substitute a variable capacitor if you want to get some frequency agility, or do as I did and just put another capacitor in parallel if you want to get the frequency to be off that used by another station. Output power is very low. If you are interested in a higher power transmitter, I've described them in other videos, mainly for 1.8 and 7 megahertz. They normally have more transistors. They're often crystal controlled, and they also have a better modulator and power amplifier stage. Then, with a transmitter like that, you can get distances of hundreds of kilometers on a frequency like 7 megahertz. That's amateur stuff, but for those who just like tinkering with low power short range transmitters, then I'd recommend this as a circuit to start off with. Enjoy these videos? Want to start in amateur radio? Well, check out my books. Ham Radio Get Started for USA readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information, visit my website vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon.